New questions keep coming. What happened during a crucial 15-minute time period as Malaysian Airlines Flight 370 crossed into Vietnamese airspace? Investigators know the last transmission from the cockpit took place early in the flight. They don't know when the two communication systems were shut down. That begs the question, if any of the crew or passengers aboard the flight have anything to do with the plane's disappearance. New data also suggests two possible routes, north over more than a dozen countries and south into the Indian Ocean. That's where more than 26 nations continue scouring the vast open sea. We have been given instructions that if we find any signs of any debris, you know, like life jackets or parts of aircraft, uh, we should report it to the port control. <laughs> the families of the missing are getting seemingly different stories every day. They still don't know even if the plane crashed or landed or if their loved ones are alive or not. We need to, to know where that fork in the road is going to go. And we're not ready to take either branch, but we have to know what's coming. The girlfriend of American passenger Philip Wood knows the news could break at any time. My son even helped me pick out which clothes to bring for him. So I have an outfit for him in, the, in my backpack. Sarah Bajic waits half a world away as investigators are no closer to providing her answers. In Washington, I'm Polo Sandoval. Saturday, March 8th at 1241 a.m. local time, Malaysia Flight 370 takes off from Kuala Lumpur headed to Beijing, China. The Boeing 777 is carrying 227 passengers and 12 crew on board. 26 minutes into the flight, at 1.07 a.m., one of the plane's critical communications sends its final transmission. The onboard computer is called the Aircraft Communications Addressing and Reporting System, or ACARS. It measures thousands of data points about the plane and pilot's performance and sends the information via satellite. It is due to transmit again at 1.37 a.m., but never does. 1.19 a.m., someone inside the cockpit, believed to be the co-pilot, provides the last verbal communication with air traffic controllers. His last words, all right, good night. It's a common goodbye to controllers after being handed off. At 1.21 a.m., the transponder, which identifies the plane to civilian radar, goes off. Critical information, like the plane's flight number, height, speed, and heading are all cut off. This happens at the same time the plane is supposed to check in with air traffic control in Vietnam. 1.30 a.m., authorities say all civilian radars lose contact with the plane altogether. Then it appears to go through erratic altitude changes, perhaps as high as 45,000 feet above the approved altitude. 2.15 a.m., Malaysian military radar last detects the plane off Malaysia's west coast, hundreds of miles off course. But it went unnoticed by radar operators until the following day. 6.30 a.m., Flight 370 is due to land in Beijing. A commercial satellite orbiting more than 22,000 miles above Earth makes electronic connections with the plane known as handshakes. At 8.11 a.m., more than seven hours after takeoff, the last connection. Using the angle of the satellite, investigators are able to draw two big arcs where they believe the plane could travel. One of those paths spans from Indonesia to the Indian Ocean. The second stretches across Central Asia to Northern Thailand. This brings us to the current massive search underway by land and by sea involving 26 countries looking for the missing flight.